Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. I'm over at my buddy shop today picking up a uh, 2012 Nissan Sentra. Uh, this car, they've had it for a couple weeks now and uh, it's having problems with uh, the speedometer not working. It's got a check engine light. It's got the ABS light. It's got, well, let me go ahead and just show you what we've got going on here. Uh, so there you can see the brake, ABS, traction control light. And when you're driving this thing, the speedometer does not work. Uh, so they already replaced a few wheel speed sensors. I believe the two front wheel speed sensors, also the, the hub bearings. Um, then they also replaced the uh, transmission speed sensor, which I believe the VSS sensor is what they replaced. Um, I'll have to double check on that. But uh, yeah, anyway, so they're still dealing with the same problem. Uh, first thing I want to do is uh, got the scan tool hooked up, so I'm going to check some codes. See if we can get focused in on that all right so we're gonna go into the codes menu all right and if you can see we got two codes in the uh, ECM right now there's a PO 500 vehicle speed sensor circuit and then there's a P 1574 ASCD speed sensor ECU to ICC signal difference one of the things that makes the snap-on scan tool so useful and uh, I would say worth the money is this little guy right here. It's called the troubleshooter. Uh, this makes life a lot easier. I can go in here and we can go under code tips. And if we're not really, if we're really not sure exactly what the code description is, or we're out in the field, you know, we don't have access to all data, um, or you just don't feel like getting out of the vehicle and pulling up all data to figure out what the uh, details on the codes are, you can pull them up over here. So uh, we're here, PO500. I'm gonna go in here and check it out. All right, so PO500 ECM detects no signal from vehicle speed sensor. So I'm gonna check on that box and then we can finish reading the description. All right, so it tells us what sets the code. The code set condition when the ECM detects no signal from vehicle speed sensor or VSS circuit is open or shorted. And then if you wanna read more possible causes, open, in, open or short in circuit, faulty sensor, Diagnostic aid, VSS out of range, usually will not set code. VSS is two-part system. VSS AC voltage generator is located on transmission. They're referring to the actual sensor. The actual sensor, the VSS speed sensor, is a uh, like a VRS type sensor. It creates its own, own voltage. So it creates an AC sine wave and if I remember correctly the signal gets sent to the speedometer so if you read here the VSS signal uh, only sent to the speedometer which is determined uh, which is used to determine the vehicle speed um, and then what happens is that inside the speedometer which is the instrument cluster there's a AD converter in a nutshell the speed sensor signal gets sent to the instrument cluster and then the instrument cluster sends that signal to the computer. Also in the ABS module, uh, there's a code stored for a C1115. Uh, and under the troubleshooter, it says here that the code sets when ABS actuator control unit detects wheel speed sensor signal is malfunctioning. It's kind of a generic code. It doesn't say specifically what speed sensor it's referring to. Um, but I think I'm just gonna put that code aside. I know that they did replace the wheel speed sensors, uh, two front wheel speed sensors on this vehicle, um, thinking that it was related to this problem with the speedometer, but uh, it didn't change anything. All right, one of the things that my friend did mention to me is that the speedometer will work if you clear the check engine light. After you clear the codes, the speedometer will work at speeds under 60 miles an hour. Once you hit 60 miles an hour and above is when the check engine light comes on, the speedometer quits working, and the codes get set in the computer. So I'm going to go ahead and try to recreate that. What I went ahead and did was clear those codes, and now I'm going to take it for a drive to see if the speedometer is working. All right, so if you can see, the speedometer is working right now after clearing the check engine light. What I want to do is I want to graph this, the VSS signal on the scan tool, and then I want to compare it to the speedometer. All right, so what I went ahead and did was I singled out the uh, vehicle speed sensor data PID and I'm graphing it right now. I'm gonna take it for a drive, then I'm gonna compare it to the actual speedometer. Okay, so we're traveling around 40 miles an hour. Got the scan tool hooked up. 
and uh, I'm just waiting for this thing to drop out. I'm gonna see if I can get up to freeway speeds around 60 and see what happens on the graph when it cuts out. There goes the traction light blinking. Something happened there for just a second. Traction light started blinking. I think we had a dip in the graph over here. I don't know if you can see that. I'll pause it here in a minute. But I really want to get this to where the speedometer just cuts out. There's that traction again. And there's just a little bit too much traffic here. All right, guys. So I wasn't able to, uh, to reach the speeds that I wanted to. Uh, I actually I just made it back to the shop right now um, I wanted to get a little bit more information before I take it back out for another test drive uh, so I went to all data and I printed up the information for this uh, DTC uh, PO 500 BSS and I found some interesting information here uh, so if you look here you'll see the PO 500 uh, vehicle speed sensor the uh, detecting condition uh, if you read this it essentially says that 13 miles an hour plus uh, the ECM detects the following status continuously for five seconds or more. The difference between a vehicle speed calculated by a secondary speed sensor that is transmitted from the TCM to the ECM via the CAN communication and the vehicle speed indicated on the combination meter. If they exceed 10 miles per hour in difference, then that's when this code is set. I find that interesting because it tells us something a little bit different than the uh, Snap-on Troubleshooter does. Uh, according to the Snap-on Troubleshooter, like some of the older Nissans, the uh, VSS speed signal went straight to the instrument cluster, and from there it went to the uh, ECM. Uh, in this case, the transmission has two speed sensors. One is considered a primary speed sensor, the other one's considered a secondary speed sensor. Um, and the secondary speed sensor is the one that we're more focused on when it comes to this code. And essentially what it's saying is that that secondary speed sensor, its signal gets transmitted to the TCM, and then from the TCM it goes to the ECM via a CAN line. So if you look at the possible causes, we have a harness or a connector, um, could be a problem. The combination meter itself, the ABS actuator or electric unit, the wheel speed sensor, uh, TCM, secondary speed sensor. Um, now I know they replaced a speed sensor on the transmission. I don't know which one they replaced. Uh, I might take a look under the hood, but I think before I do that, let me see if I can pull up some data pids for this secondary speed sensor, because that's the one that they're telling us we should be looking at, is the secondary speed sensor. And we should be comparing that to the uh, instrument cluster. Um, I really couldn't find a data pid for a secondary speed sensor uh, in my snap-on scan tool here, so um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to a different scan tool. And what I have graphed right now are the four wheel speed sensors, the uh, front left-hand side, the front right-hand side, the rear left, and the rear right. So we're gonna take it for a drive and we're gonna see what we find. Alright, that's a little interesting. I didn't see any numbers dropping out, but what I do notice is that the, uh, looks like the front wheels seem to be spinning faster than the rear wheels, but I wonder what that has to do with the uh, wheel speed sensors. Let's try that again. So that's interesting. What I see is that the front wheels seem to be staying uh, uh, four miles an hour faster 
than the rear wheels. And actually, I was able to take this thing up to about 80 miles an hour, and the, the traction control system won't let me go past 80. Uh, it's just kicking in, and, and, and it's really reducing the power on the car. But at 80 miles an hour, I was able to see that the front were going 80 and the rear were going 75. So there was actually up to five mile an hour difference between the front and the rear wheels. I guess one of the things I should mention is that I also have my lab scope hooked up. I'm on the signal wire for the secondary vehicle speed sensor. Uh, I'm connected directly to the TCM on that signal wire. Uh, but I'll tell you this right now is that I don't see any dropouts. I don't see any glitches. I see no problem with the signal wire here. Uh, so I don't think our problem is with the sensor here. I really am focused more on the uh, wheel speed sensors being a problem here or the tire sizes. So I'm going to check those out. After driving around for a while, one of the things that I could not duplicate uh, is the speedometer uh, going out on me. It seems to stay working and I don't see the check engine light coming on. I don't see the ABS light nor the nor does the traction control light stay on. Uh, but I'm curious about this difference in the wheel speed. I wanna check the tire sizes to see if they're different. All right guys, so check this out. On the rear tires, we have these 20565R16s. And up in the front, we have these 20555R16s. So we have uh, 55s in the front and 65s in the back. What we're gonna do next is rotate the tires to see if the speeds change from front to rear. All right guys, so we just rotated the tires. We're gonna go for a quick drive. And I'm just gonna kind of focus you in on these uh, wheel speed sensors. Excuse the bumpiness. I'm trying my best to hold this camera. All right, I can actually see the difference. Uh, now it looks like the uh, rear wheels are moving faster than the front ones. Let me get up to, I'm gonna try to get up to 60 miles an hour. Oh, actually, you know what? Looks like the speedometer just shut off. All right, well, funny we weren't able to duplicate that earlier but that's how we picked the vehicle up and it's it's doing it now Let's see if I can get that speed up All right, what's funny about this is that it seems to be happening a lot more frequently now that we rotated the tires. Uh, was able to clear the codes uh, in the ECM and the TCM and then take it out for a spin. And within probably about, I mean, a few seconds of driving when I hit about 40 miles an hour, uh, the speedometer stopped working and all the lights came back on in the instrument cluster. Uh, so I just cleared it again Let's see if we can catch that on camera. I'm gonna go ahead and take it for a quick spin one more time. And you'll see that the speedometer is working. Let me catch that. All right, so we got a straightaway here. Speedometer's working great. There goes the lights and there goes the speedometer. I'm still traveling. The speedometer is not working. All right, guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this car back to my friend's shop and I'm gonna have him replace the tires. So just to recap my thoughts, um, when we first got the vehicle, we noted that the front wheels were spinning faster than the rear wheels. And that's because the wrong tire size. This created a totally different symptom from the symptom that we had after we rotated the tires. Because after we rotated the tires, the rear wheels were spinning faster than the front wheels. So when the front wheels were spinning faster than the rear wheels, the traction control system was activating and it was trying to slow the vehicle down. But 
after we rotated the tires, the traction control system never tried to activate. It immediately detected a fault. And after it detected the fault, it would shut the speedometer off, it would turn the ABS light on and the traction control light on, and also the check engine light. The reason I believe it's doing this is because this is a front wheel drive vehicle. The front wheels drive the vehicle. So when the front wheels are spinning faster than the rear, the traction control system believes that it's losing traction and that's why it's activating. But when we rotated the tires and the computer saw that the rear wheels were spinning faster than the front, it doesn't believe that it's losing traction. It just immediately knows that there's a fault. It knows that there is no reason that the rear wheels should be spinning faster than the front wheels on this vehicle. So I know that's confusing. Anyways guys, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe to the channel. If you like the video, please like the video. And if you have any questions, you can always comment down below. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next one.